four things. First of all, you do get used to his face. The first couple of times I was like, whoa, I'm never gonna get used to this. And then after about a week, I was like, huh, not so bad. Second of all, he's actually a really cool dude. I mean, he's pretty funny. Like the teachers will say something and August will whisper something funny to me that no one else hears and totally cracks me up. He also just overall is a nice kid. Like he's easy to hang out with and talk to and stuff. Third of all, he's really smart. I thought he'd be behind and everything because he hadn't gone to school before, but in most things, he's way ahead. I mean, he's maybe even smarter, as smart as Charlotte or Eczema, but he's up there. Um, and unlike Charlotte and Eczema, he lets me cheat off him if I really need to, though I've only needed to a couple times. He also lets me copy his homework once, though we both got in trouble after that, after class. The two of you got the exact same answers wrong on yesterday's homework, Miss Rubin said, looking at both of us like she was waiting for an explanation. I didn't know what to say because the explanation would have been, oh, that's because I copied August's homework. But August lied to protect me. He was like, oh, that's because we did our homework together last night, which wasn't true at all. Well, doing your homework together is, one, is a good thing, Miss Rubin answered, but you're supposed to still do it separately, okay? You could work side by side if you want, but you can't actually do the homework together. Got it? After we left class, I said, dude, thanks for doing that. And he was like, no problem. That was cool. Fourthly, now I... Now that I know him, I would actually, uh, I would say I actually want to want to be friends with August. At first, I admit I was only friends with him because Mr. Tushman asked me to be especially nice to him and all that. But now I would choose to hang out with him. He laughs out all my jokes, and I kind of feel like I can tell August any, like he's a good friend. Like if all and all the guys in fifth grade were lined up against the wall, I, and I got to choose anyone I wanted to hang out with, I would choose August. Ex friends. Bleeding scream. What the heck? Summer Dawson has always been a bit out there, but this was too much. All I did was ask her why August was acting like um, he was mad at or me or something. I figured she would know, and all she said was bleeding scream. I don't even know what that means. It's so weird because one day me and August were friends, and the next day, whoosh, he's hardly talking to me, and I haven't the slightest idea why. When I say, hey, to August, you mad at me or something, he shrugs and walks away. So I would take that as a definite yes. And since I know for a fact that I didn't do anything to, to him to be mad about, I figured Summer could tell me what's up. But all she said was bleeding scream. Yeah, big help. Thanks, Summer. You know, I got plenty of other friends in school. So August, if August wants to officially be my ex-friend, then fine. That's okay by me. See if I care. I started ignoring him like he's ignoring me in school now. This actually is kind of hard since we sit next to each other in practically every class. Other kids have noticed and have started asking me in August, uh, had a fight. Nobody asks August what's going on. Hardly anyone ever talks to him, I mean. I mean, the only person he hangs out with other than me is Summer. Sometimes he hangs out with Reed Kingsley a little bit too, and the two masses got him playing Dungeons and Dragons a couple times at recess. Charlotte Crawl, her goody good two shooting, doesn't ever do more than nod hello when she's passing by in the hallway. And I don't know if he's everyone's still playing the plague behind his back, because no one ever really told me about it directly. But my point is that it's not like he has a whole lot of friends he could be hanging out with instead of me. If he wants to diss me, um, he's the one who loses, not me. So this is how things are between us now. We only talk to each other about school stuff if absolutely have to. Like I'll say, what did Ruben say the homework was? And he'll answer me. Or he'll be like, can I use your pencil sharpener? And I'll get my sharpener out of my pencil case for him. But as soon as the bell rings, we go our separate ways. Why this, uh, why this good is um, why this is good is because I can hang out with all the, uh, a lot more kids now. Before I was only hanging with August all the time. Kids were hanging out with, weren't hanging out with me because they, they'd have to hang out with him. Or they keep things from me, like the whole thing about the plague. I think it was the only one who wasn't in on me, except for Summer, maybe the D&D &D crowd. And truth is, though, nobody that's, um, though, nobody that obvious is about it. Nobody wants to hang out with him. Everyone's way too hung up on being the popu on popular and he's just as far as from it as popular group as you can get. But now I hang out with anyone I want. If, the popular, um, if I wanted to be a popular group, I could totally be in the popular group. Why this is bad is, well, because I don't actually hang out with the popular kids that much. And B, I actually like hanging out with August. So this kind of mess, um, and, and this is, so this is kind of messed up. And it's all August's fault. Snow. The first snow of winter hit right before Thanksgiving break. School was closed, so we got an extra day vacation. I was glad about that because I was so bummed out about the whole August thing, and I just wanted someone to chill out with 
having um, some, some time to chill out without having to see him every day. Also, waking up to a snow day is just about my favorite thing in the world. I love that feeling when you first open your eyes in the morning, you don't ha even know why everything seems so different than usual. Then it hits you. Everything's quiet. No cars honking. No buses going down the street. Then you run over to the window outside and everything's covered in white. The sidewalks, the trees, the cars on the street, your window panes. And when, you, when that happens on a school day and you find out your school is closed, well, I don't care how old I am, I'm always going to think that this is the best feeling in the world. And I never... And I'm never going to be the one of those grown-ups that uses an umbrella when um, it's snowing, ever. Dad's school was closed, too, so he took me and Jamie sledding down Skeleton um, Hill in the park. They say little kids broke his neck while sledding down that hill a few years ago, but I don't actually know if that was true or just one of those legends. On the way home, I spotted the banged-up wooden um, sled uh, kind of propped up against an old Indian rock mountain, or Indian, Indian rock monument. Dad said to leave it, it was just garbage, but something told me it would make a great sled. So dad let me drag it home and I spent the rest of the day fixing it up. I super glued the broken slats together and wrapped some heavy duty white uh, duct tape around the extra for extra strength. Then I sprayed the paint, uh, spray painted the whole thing white with uh, paint that I had gotten from my alabaster, for my alabaster for banks. I was making it for the Egyptian museum project. When that, it was all dry, I painted a lightning um, in gold letters on the middle piece of wood, and I made a little lightning bolt symbol above the letters. It looked pretty professional, I'd have to say. Dad was like, wow, Jackie, you were right about that sled. The next day, we went back to Skeleton Hill with lightning. It was the fastest thing I've ever ridden, so, so, so much faster than the plastic sleds we've been using. And because it had gotten warmer outside, the snow became crunchier and wetter. Good packing snow. Me and Jamie took turns on lightning after, all afternoon, we were in the park until our fingers were frozen and our lips had turned a little blue. Dad practically had to drag us home. By the end of the weekend, the snow had sort of um, started turning gray and yellow, and the rainstorm turned. Um, then the rainstorm turned most of the snow into slush. We got back to school on Monday. There was no snow left. It was a rainy and yucky first day from vacation, a slushy day. That's how I was feeling inside too. I nodded hay to August the first time I saw him. We were in front of his lockers, and he nodded hay back. I wanted to tell him about lightning, but I didn't. Fortune favors the bold. Mr. Brown's December precept was, fortune favors the bold. We were all supposed to write a paragraph about some time in our lives we did something very brave and how it was, how because of it something good happened to us. I thought about it, this a lot to be truthful. I have to say that I think the bravest thing I ever did was become friends with August, but I couldn't write about that of course. I was afraid we'd just have to read it out loud or Mr. Brown would put them up on the bulletin board like he does sometimes. So instead I wrote a lame thing about how I used to be afraid of the oceans when I was little. It was dumb, but I couldn't think of anything else. I wonder what August wrote. He probably had a lot of things to choose from. Private school. My parents are not rich. I say this because sometimes they um, sometimes think that everyone who goes to private school is rich, but that isn't true with us. Dad's a teacher and mom's a social worker, which means they don't have those kinds of jobs where people make gazillions of dollars. We used to have a car, but we sold it when Jamie started kindergarten at Beecher Prep. We don't live in a big townhouse or in one of those dormant buildings along the park. We live on top of a uh, top floor of a five-story walk-up we rent from an old lady named Donna Petra, all the way on the other on the other side of Broadway. That's code for the section north of section of North River Heights, where people don't walk want to park their cars. Me and Jamie share a room. I overhear my parents talk about things. Can we do this without the air conditioning one more year, or maybe I can work two jobs this summer. So today's recess, I was hanging out with Julian, Henry, and Miles. Julian, who knows everyone, and Julian, who everyone knows, is rich. Was like, I hate that I have to go back to Paris this Christmas. It's so boring, dude. But it's like Paris. I said, like an idiot. Believe me, it's so boring. My grandmother lives in a house in the middle of nowhere. It's like an hour away from Paris in this tiny, tiny, tiny village. I swear to God, nothing happens there. I mean, it's like, oh wow, there's another fly on the wall. Look, there's a new dog sleeping on the um, sidewalk. Yippee. I laughed. Sometimes Julian could be very funny. Though my parents are talking about um, talking about throwing a big party this year instead of going to Paris. I hope so. What are you going to do over break? Said Julian. Just hang out, I said. You're so lucky, he said. I hope it snows again, I answered. Got a new sled that's so amazing. I was about to tell them about lightning, but Miles talked first. I got a new sled too, he said. My dad got it, off, got it from Hammer, Hammerture Slummer. It's state-of-the-art. How could a sled be state-of-the-art, asked Julian. It was like $800 or something. Whoa, 
we should all go sledding and have a race down Skeleton Hill, I said. Um, that hill's so lame, answered Julian. Are you kidding? I said, some kid broke their neck there. That's why it's called Skeleton Hill. Julian narrowed his eyes and looked at me like it was the biggest moron in the world. It's called Skeleton Hill because it's on an ancient burial ground, duh, he said. Anyways, it should be called Garbage Hill now. It's, um, it's so freaking junky. Last time I was there, it was so gross, like soda cans and broken bottles and stuff. He shook his head. I left my old sled there, said Miles. It was, the, uh, it was this um, piece of junk, and someone took it, too. Maybe a hobo wants to go sledding, laughed Julian. Where did you leave it, I said. By the rock at the bottom of the hill, and I went back the next day, and it was gone. I couldn't believe somebody took it. Here's what you can do, said Julian. Next time it snows, my dad could drive us all up to the golf course in Westchester and make a skeleton hill looks like nothing. Hey, Jack, where are you going? I started walking away. I've got to get my books out of my locker, I lied. I just wanted to get away from them fast. I didn't want anyone to know that I was the hobo who had taken the sled. In science, I'm not the greatest student in the world. I know some kids actually like school, but I honestly can't say I do. I like some parts of school, like PE, computer classes, and lunch and recess, but all in all, I'd be fine without school. And things I hate the most about school is all the homework we get. It's enough that we have to sit through class after, after class and try to stay awake, while we fill our heads with all the stuff we'll probably never use, um, use or need to know, like how to figure out the surface area of a cube or what's the difference between kinetic and potential energy. I'm like, who cares? I've never ever heard my parents say the word kinetic in my life. I hate science the most out of all my classes. We get so much work in it, it's not even funny. And the teacher, Miss Rubin, is so strict about everything, even the way we write our headings on top of the paper. I once got two points off homework assignment because I didn't put the date on top. Crazy stuff. When me and August were still friends, I was doing okay in science because August sat next to me and always let me copy his notes. August has the neatest handwriting of anybody I've ever seen who's a boy. Even this, his script is neat, up and down perfectly, with really small, small round loopy letters. But now that we're ex-friends, it's bad because I can't ask him to let me copy his notes anymore. So I was kind of scrambling today to take notes about what Miss Rubin was saying. My handwriting is awful. When all of a sudden I started, uh, she started talking about the fifth grade science fair project and how we all have to choose a science project to work on. While she was saying this, I was thinking, uh, we just finished the Egypt, the Egypt project. Now we have to start a whole new thing. And then in my head, I was going, oh no, I like the, I'm like the kid in Home Alone with his mouth hanging open, hanging open and his hands on his face. That, um, that was the face I was making on the inside. And then I thought of the pictures of the melting ghost face. I've seen somewhere um, the mouths are open wide and they're all screaming. And then all of a sudden this picture flew into my head, this memory, and I knew what summer had meant by bleeding scream. It's so weird how all of it just came back to me in a flash. Someone in the homeroom had dressed up as bleeding scream costume in Halloween. I remember seeing him a few desks away from me and I remember not seeing him again. Oh man, it was August. All this hit me in science class where the teacher was talking. Oh man, I'd been talking to Julian about August. Oh man, now I understood. It was, I was so mean. I don't even know why. I'm not even sure what I said, but it was bad. I, it was only a minute or two. It was just that I knew Julian and everybody thought I was so weird for hanging out with August and all the, all the time. And I felt um, stupid. And I don't know why I said that stuff. I just was going along. It was stupid and I'm stupid. Oh my God. How was I supposed, he was supposed to come as Bubba Fett. I would never have said that stuff in front of Bubba Fett, but that was him, that bleeding scream sitting in the desk, looking over at us. The long white mask and fake squirting blood, the mouth open wide like a ghoul was crying. That was him. I felt like I was going to puke. Partners, I didn't hear the word of what Miss, a word of what Mr. Rubin was saying after that. Blah, 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 science fair project, blah, 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 partners, blah, blah, blah. It was like the way the grown-ups grown in Charlie Brown movies talk. Like someone was talking underwater, mwah, 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 mwah. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Rubin started pointing to kids around the classroom. Read Tristan, Maya, Max, Charlie, Zima, August, and Jack, she pointed to us um, when, when she said us, Miles, Almost, Julian, Julian, Henry, Savannah, and I didn't hear the rest. Uh-huh, I said, the bell rang. So don't forget to get together with your partner and choose the projects from the list, guys. And said Mrs. Room and everybody's, as everyone started talk, taking off, I looked up at August, but he had already put his backpack on his back and was practically out the door. I must have had a stupid look on my face because Julian came over and said, looks like you're 
you and your best buds are partners. He was smirking when he said this. I hated him so much right now. Hello, Earth Jack, he said when I didn't answer him. Be quiet, Julian. I was putting my loose leaf binder away in my backpack and wanted him to wanted him away from me. You must be so bummed you got stuck with him, he said. You should tell Miss Rubin you want to switch partners. I bet she let you. No, she wouldn't, I said. Ask her. No, I don't want to. Miss Rubin, Julian said, turning around and raising his hand at the same time. Miss Rubin was erasing the chalkboard at the front of the room. She turned around and heard her name. No, Julian, I whispered, uh, whispered scream. What is it, boys? I said impatiently. Could we switch partners if we wanted to? Said Julian, looking very um, innocent. Me and Jack had the science fair project idea we wanted to work on together. Well, I guess we could arrange. She started to say, no, it's okay, Miss Rubin. I said quickly, heading out the door. Bye. And Julian ran after me. Why did you do that? He said, catching up to me on the stairs. We could have been partners. You don't have to be friends with that freak if you don't want to, you know, uh, want to be, you know. And that's when I punched him right in the mouth. Detention. Sometimes you just can't explain. You don't even try. You don't know where it all starts. All the sentences would jumble up like a giant knot if you opened your mouth. Any words that came out would be wrong. Jack, this is very serious, Mr. Tushman um, was saying. I was in his office sitting on a chair across from the desk looking at this picture of a pumpkin on the wall behind him. Kids get expelled for this kind of thing, Jack. I know you're a good kid and I don't want that to happen to you, but you have to explain yourself. This is not like you, Jack, said mom. She had come from work as soon as she had, had as soon as they called her. I could tell she was going back and forth, being really mad and really surprised. I thought you and Julian were friends, said Mr. Tishman. We're not friends, I said. My arms were crossed in front of me. But you punched someone in the mouth, Jack, said Mum, raising her voice. I mean, what were you thinking? She looked at Mr. Tishman. Honestly, he's never hit anyone before. He's just not like that. Julian's mouth was bleeding, Jack, said Mr. Tishman. You knocked out a tooth. Did you know that? It was a baby tooth, I said. Jack, said Mum, shaking her hands her head. Well, that's what Nurse Molly said. You're missing the point, Mum yelled. It's just, I just want to know why, said Mr. Tushman, raising his shoulder. Uh, it'll just make things worse, I, I sighed. Just tell me, Jack. I shrugged, but I didn't say anything. I just couldn't. If I told him that Julian had called August a freak, he'd go and talk to Julian, and then Julian would tell him, and I would be, how I bad enough August, and everybody would find out. Jack, Mum's cries. I started to cry. I'm sorry. Mr. Tushman raised his eyebrows and nodded, but he didn't say anything. Instead, he kind of blew his, um, blew his hands like you do when you're cold. Jack, he said, I don't really know what, what to say here. I mean, you punched a kid. We have rules about that kind of thing, you know, an automatic expulsion, and you're not even trying to explain yourself. I was crying a lot by now, and the second mom put her arm around me, I started to bawl. Let's, um, said Mr. Tushin, taking his glasses off. Let's do this, Jack. We're out for winter break next week anyways. How about you stay home for the rest of this week, and then after winter break, you'll come back, and everything will be fresh and brand new. Clean slate to speak. Am I being suspended, I sniffled. Well, he said, shrugging, technically, yes, but it's only for a couple of days, and, I, and I'll tell you what. While you're at home, you take some time to think about what happened, and if you want to write me a letter explaining what happened to, and a letter to Julian apologizing, then we won't even put it this on your permanent record, okay? You go home and talk it over with your mom and dad, and maybe in the morning you'll figure it out a bit more. That sounds like a good plan, Mr. Tushman said, mom nodding. Thank you. Everything is going to be okay, said Mr. Tushman, walking over to the door, which was closed. I know you're a good, nice kid, Jack, and I know that sometimes even nice kids do dumb things, right? He opened the door. Thanks for be being so understanding, said Mom, shaking her head, uh, his hand at the door. No problem. He leaned over and told her something quietly that I couldn't hear. I know. Thank you, said Mom, nodding. So, kiddo, he said to me, putting his hands on my shoulder. Think about what you've done. Have a great ho holiday. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. I wiped my nose on my sleeve and started walking out the door. Say thank you to Mr. Tushman, Mom said, tapping my shoulder. I stopped and turned around, but I couldn't look at him. Thank you, Mr. Tushman, I said. Bye, Jack, he answered, and then walked out the door. Season's greeting. Weirdly enough, when we got back home, Mom and, I, and Mom brought in the mail. There were holiday cards from both, Jul both Julian's family and August's family. Julian's holiday card was a picture of Julian wearing a tie, looking like he was about to go to the opera or something. August's holiday card was a cute old dog wearing reindeer antlers and a red nose and booties. The, uh, there was a cartoon bubble above the dog said that ho 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 and on the inside it read to the will family peace on earth love nate isabel olivia august and daisy cute card huh i said to mom who hardly said a word to me all the way home i think she honestly just didn't know what to say that must be their dog i said do you want to tell me what's going on inside that head of yours jack she answered i bet they put the picture of their dog on the card every year i said she took the card from my hands and looked at the picture carefully. Then she raised an eyebrow and her shoulders gave um, Mia back the card. We're very lucky, Jack. There's so much we take for granted. 
I know, I said. I knew what she was talking about without having to say it. I heard that Julian's mom actually photoshopped August's face out of the class picture when she got it. She gave a copy to a couple of the other mothers. That's just awful, said mom. People are just, they're not always great. I know. Is this why you hit Julian? No. And then I told her why I punched Julian. And I told her that August was my ex-friend. And I told her about Halloween. Letters, emails, Facebook tweets. December 18th. Dear Mr. Tishman, I'm very sorry for punching Julian. It was very wrong, very, very wrong for me to do that. I'm writing this letter to you to, t um, to t tell him that too. If it's okay, I would really rather not tell you why I did what I did. It doesn't make it right. Also, I'd rather not, not make Julian get in trouble for having said things he should not have said. Sincerely, Jack Will. Dear Julian, I'm very, very, very sorry for hitting you. It was wrong of me. I hope you're okay. I hope your grown-up tooth grows fast. Mine, mine always do. Sincerely, Will. Jack Will. December 26th. Dear Jack, thank you so much for the letter. One thing I've learned about being a middle school director for 20 years, there are almost always more than two sides to every story. Although I don't know the details, I have an inkling about, why, about what may have sparked your confrontation with Julian. While nothing justifies striking another student, ever, I also know good friends are sometimes worth defending. This has been a tough year um, for a lot of students, as the first year of middle school usually is. Keep up the good work, keep being a fine boy, and, we'll know, uh, and we all know you are. All the best, Lawrence Tushman, middle school director. Dear Mr. Tushman, I spoke with Amanda and John Will yesterday, and they expressed their regret at Jack having punched our son, Julian, in the mouth. I'm writing to let you know that my husband and I support your decision to allow Jack to return to beat your prep after a two-day suspension. Although I think hitting a child would be valid grounds for expulsion in other schools, I agree some, such extreme measures aren't warranted. We have known that the, we've known the Will family since the boys were in kindergarten and are confident that every measure will be taken to ensure this doesn't happen again. To that end, I wonder if Jack's unexpectedly violent behavior might have been a result of too much pressure being placed on his young shoulders. I'm speaking specifically of the new child with special needs who both Jack and Julian were asked to befriend. In retrospect, and having seen the child in question at various school functions and in the class picture, I think it may have been too much to ask our children to be able to process all that. Certainly when Julian mentioned he was having a hard time befriending the boy, we told him he was off the hook in that regard. We think the transition into middle school is hard enough without having to place a greater burden on the, or hardships on these young impressionable minds. I should also mention that as a member of the school board, I was a little disturbed that more consideration was not given during the child's application process to the, uh, to Beecher, to the fact that Beecher Prep is not an inclusion, inclusion school. There are many parents, myself included, who question the decision to let this child into our school. At very least, I'm somewhat troubled that this child was not held at the same stringent application standards, i.e. interview, that the rest of the incoming middle school students were. Best, Melissa Albans. Dear Mrs. Albans, thank you for your email outlining your concerns. Uh, were I not convinced that Jack Will is extremely sorry for his actions and were not, and I were not confident he would not repeat those actions, rest assured, I would not be allowing him back at Beecher Prep. As for the other concerns regarding the new student August, please note, that he does not have special needs. He is neither disabled, handicapped, nor developmentally delayed in any way. So there's no reason, reason to assume anyone would take issue to his, with his admit, admittance to Beecher Prep, whether it's an inclusion school or not. In terms of the application process, the administration um, director and I both felt that with, with it within our right to hold the interview off-site at August's home for reasons that are obvious. We felt that this um, slight break in protocol was warranted but it's in no way prejudice in one way or another. The, app, to the application review. August is an extremely good student and has secured a friendship with some truly exceptional young people, including Jack Will. At the beginning of the school year, when I listed certain children to be welcoming committee to August, I did not as did so as a way to easing his transition to the school environment. I did not ask these children to, to be especially kind to new students, but place extra burden or hardship on them. In fact, I thought I would teach them a thing or two about empathy and friendship and loyalty. And it turns out Jack Weld didn't need to learn these, any of these virtues. He already had them in abundance. Thank you for your email um, and being in touch. Lawrence Tushman, or Tushman. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for being so understanding about the incident with Jack. He um, is, as you know, extremely sorry for his actions. 
I hope you do accept our, um, our offer to pay for Julian's dental bill. We are very touched by your concern regarding Jack's friendship with August. Please know that we have asked Jack how, if he felt any undue pressure about any of this, and the answer was a resolute no. He enjoys August's company, and he feels like he has made a good friend. Hope you have a happy new year. John and Amanda will. Jack Lope will wants to be friends with you on Facebook. Sorry. Hey August, it's me, Jack Will. I've noticed I'm not friends with on your friends list. Hope you have um hope you friend me again because I'm really sorry. I just wanted to say that. Sorry, I know why you're mad at me right now, and I'm sorry I didn't didn't mean didn't mean the stuff I said. I was so stupid. I hope you can forgive me. Hope we can be friends again, Jack. One new text message from August. Got your message. You know why I'm mad at you? Did Summer tell you? One new text message from Jack Will. She told me bleeding scream as a hint, but I didn't get it at first. I remember seeing bleeding scream in homeroom on Halloween. Didn't know if it, it was you. Thought you were coming as Bubba Fett. One new text message, August. I changed my mind at the last minute. Did you really punch Julian? One new text message, Jack Will. Yeah, I punched him and knocked out a tooth in the back. A baby tooth. One new text message, August. Why did you punch him? One new text message, Jack Will. I don't know. One new text message, August. Liar. I bet he said something about me, right? One new text message, Jack Will. He's a jerk, but I was a jerk too. Really, really, really sorry for what I said, dude. Okay, can we be friends again? One new text message, August. Okay. One new text message, Jack Will. Awesome. One new text message, August. But, did, but tell me the truth, okay? Would you really want to kill yourself if you were me? One new text message, Jack Will. No, I swear on my life, but dude, I'd want to kill myself if I were Julian. One new text message, August. LOL. Yes, dudes, we're friends again.